Hey everyone, welcome back to this Tosca automation playlist and we are talking about the top 10 Tosca best practices. Now prior to this, I have done 5 videos on different best practices. So if you have not watched them, please go ahead and watch all those videos before you continue with this particular video. So before we talk about the Tosca best practice number 6, I would also recommend you to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on the future videos. So let's jump to this particular best practice. Now Tracentis recommends that we should minimize the use of loops. Now we have seen different loops and how we can use them in Tosca. Now we have seen a do while loop, a while loop and a if else statement, right? So we have been using this uh, in some of the scenarios. But Tricentis tells that loops are not uh, the natural way of doing things in Tosca. The reason is Tosca is not a programming language like Java or .NET. So Java and .NET are more suitable for using these loops. They also have some enhanced versions of loops so that they can uh, perform better or more efficiently or faster, right? But Tosca is just a test automation tool and it is providing you a way of using the loops but at the end it is not a programming language and it cannot handle the complexity uh, because loops are complex to use. Also they take much longer and hence they should be avoided. Instead of these loops what Tricentis recommends is to use constraints or repetition methods. So you will be using loops whenever you want to repeat a particular test case a certain number of times before a condition is met. Or you could be also using it um, inside a table where you want to loop through all the rows and columns and try to find some particular cell value, right? So these are the scenarios where you'll be using loops. But instead of that, so instead of uh, going through the loops in table, you can use something like constraint. We have already seen that and also to repeat the number of steps uh, in a particular test case you can use the repetitions method these two are pretty straightforward uh, methods and they can be used in these different scenarios now although we have seen this already uh, since we are talking about this best practice let me quickly uh, go through the concept uh, again okay so coming back to tosca uh, let's look at an example where we have used the while loop and how it can be avoided um, and instead of that we can use something called repetition okay so in this test case you can see there is a while loop okay uh, what it is doing it is just setting a buffer uh, with a value x okay so initial value is 1 for that uh, buffer x and then inside the while loop we are checking whether uh, that buffer value is less than 5 okay so there is a verification step until then this while loop will continue and inside the loop what we are doing we are calculating so we are increasing the value of the buffer x by 1 okay so this will continue until it reaches this value 5 and then this condition will not satisfy so it will stop the loop okay so that's the whole concept here uh, let me quickly run it and show it to you so here uh, we have executed this you can see uh, the buffer has value 1 and then the while loop it has got 5 repetitions and in the last repetition um, the 5 is less than 5 condition is evaluated to false and hence the repetition stops right so that all works okay but there is another way of doing that and even that is much simpler right again the same thing uh, we set the buffer but then we create a folder okay inside this we again do the calculation okay but here uh, in the properties of this folder we have set the repetition to 5 so this will automatically repeat the steps for 5 number of times okay now if I run this probably the same um, action it will perform it will run the repetitions right so it will set the buffer and then it will do 5 repetitions Okay, and then uh, we will get the buffer value of x, whatever it is, right? 
So this is just a simple example of how you can avoid loops in a particular scenario instead of that use repetitions, right? Similarly, if you want to do it in tables, right, in web tables, when you want to find a particular cell, instead of um, going through all the rows and columns and then uh, trying to do a comparison of values and finding that particular cell, just put constraints, okay? So we have put the constraint on first team and last team, and then um, we are verifying that uh, particular cell, okay, uh, on which these constraints are set, right? So Tosca will go ahead and search for this uh, cells which has got this constraints, right? And it will directly end up with this particular cell uh, which matches both the conditions, right? So we don't even need to iterate through all the rows and columns and make it more complicated, right? So the whole idea is to simplify your test cases, right? So that it can be maintained easily and uh, they perform better, right? And there are less chances of failure, okay? So these are the three ideas which you need to always keep in mind whenever you are developing your test cases and use the more efficient way of um, developing them maybe not the usual way of doing it, right? So that is uh, what Tracentis recommends for this particular best practice. Minimize the usage of loops wherever you can, okay? You should only use it at specific places. Um, otherwise, use the more efficient methods like constraints or repetitions. So that's all for this particular video. I hope you enjoyed it and you liked it. Uh, we would like to hear your comments. So go to the comment section and put your comments or any questions you have on this particular topic. We have lots more videos coming up, so keep watching and keep learning.